Hello YouTube, I recently purchased the Hawk DLX dirt bike, which came with a setup DVD. It's about 15 minutes long, but that DVD video has some pretty horrible computer voice transcription. It was so bad it was funny. The visual instructions were decent, so I thought I'd help my fellow Hawk enthusiasts by narrating their video while also providing a few additional tips and commentary. So here we go. Obviously, when you get the box, you'll want to cut the straps and remove the package carton. An X-Acto knife certainly works well here, and the straps were plastic, so scissors would have worked too. The steel package frame comes apart by removing the bolts, which are 10 millimeter. A power screwdriver is definitely helpful here. There's lots of black cable tie holding things in place, including the front wheel. And still using a 10 millimeter socket, take out the two bolts from the handlebar clamp. The steel package frame at the back wheel is held in place with two bolts at the bottom on each side and you can continue removing the rest of the package frame. Don't worry, the bike won't fall over. There are lots of wrapped up accessories like the headlight, plastic covers, and accessories box that you'll want to remove them from the frame area and inspect for any damage. My steel package frame was horribly bent up. I thought for sure I'd find some serious dents or things broken, but surprisingly, just one small little reflector was the only casualty on my bike. Remove the brackets that are holding and compressing the front shocks. The front end will jerk up when you remove the last bolt. Next, you'll want to remove the front axle bolt and nut that secures the front of the bike to the bottom frame. Getting the bolt to slide out will take a rubber mallet, and it's best if you have help to lift the bike up some to reduce weight as you get that bolt out. Be sure to save the bolt, nut, and the metal spacer. You'll need it all for the front wheel. Get some help to lift the bike up and out. Quick tip, Harbor Freight has a $40 dirt bike stand that's ideal for holding the bike when you go to put the front wheel on. Remove the cable ties and plastic film that covers the speed sensor. And remove the plastic film from the handlebar and switches too. Take out the two bolts from the handlebar clamp. You'll need to find two more matching bolts for the next step. Position the handlebar into place and make sure the handlebar is in the middle of the clamp before fully tightening. Next, take out both screws from the left handlebar switch. Please note that mine were screwed in extremely tight. Be careful not to strip the heads. Open it up and place it on the left side of the handlebar and tighten into place with the two screws. I recommend leaving a small gap between the rubber handlebar grip and the switch assembly. Find the clutch lever and remove the two bolts from the base. On my bike, these bolts were also screwed in extremely tight. Beware. Put the base on the left handlebar beside the switch assembly and tighten with the two bolts. Make sure your switch base and clutch lever are in the right place before moving on. Also check your cable routes. The front wheel will go on next, so one option is to set the side stand down and have one person hold the bike like shown while a second person prepares the assembly of the front wheel. Remove the plastic clip from the front brake caliper. Position the front wheel in between the front shocks. Pay special attention to the disc brake as it should slide in between the brake pads. Put the speed sensor onto the front hub. Look for the notches to line up when doing so. Also ensure the brake disc remains in place within the brake caliper. Slide the front axle in the hole and then slide into the speed sensor and front hub. Find the left bush for the front axle and place into the front hub as shown. And when you have it all lined up, Finish sliding the axle bolt through so that the threads appear.
Secure the front axle with the nut and firmly tighten. Next, you'll need to connect the rear spring to the frame by first removing the bolt and nut. Have one person move the bike until the rear shock and bracket hole of the swing arm are lined up so that the bolt can pass through. Secure with the nut and firmly tighten. Open the accessories box and review all the parts inside. It's best to organize the items before your next steps. Find the cotter pin, washer, two springs, and the rear brake arm for the next step. Remove the cable tie from the front footrest on the right side of the bike. The footrest will fall into place. Next, take the brake arm and slide the axle-like part into the hole, making sure that the jagged footpiece is toward the front of the bike as shown. The washer and cutter pin will go on the end. Use pliers to bend the cutter pin after insertion. Remove the cutter pin, washer, and bolt shown here, and then connect the rear brake arm and bracket with that same bolt, washer, and cutter pin. Locate the larger spring and connect to the hole on the brake arm. Use pliers or a screwdriver like shown to attach the other end of the spring to the steel pin under the footrest. The smaller spring will attach to the electric switch and to the small hole on the brake arm as shown here. Locate the gear shift lever and remove the bolt. It will likely be very tight. Remove the cable tie of the driver footrest on the left side and then slide the gear shift lever onto the gear shift axle and tighten the bolt back into place on the lever. If you haven't already, remove the plastic film covering the gas tank and then remove the plastic film from the left plastic piece shown here. You'll need two screws and two rubber washers assembled together like shown and use those to install the left side cover with those two screws. Use the image shown here for proper installation placement. Locate the two front turn lamps and remove any plastic film and untangle any wiring. The wires are color coded. The lamp with green and blue wires are for the right side while the orange and green wires are for the left side lamp. Remove the nut from the left turn lamp and then pass the wire through the bracket hole and secure into place with a nut. Repeat this process for the right turn lamp by removing the nut from the lamp, passing the wires through the bracket hole, and then securing it in place with the nut. Depending upon your year or generation of build, you might need to take two bolts from the speedometer bracket as shown in order to install the speedometer, followed by securing it with the two bolts. On my 2021 model, I simply had to set the speedometer into three holes already in place and then secure it with three nuts. Next, it's time to insert the round connections of your turn lamps into the color matching connections as seen here.
Remove the protective plastic wrap from your headlight and then retrieve two screws with washers from the bag of accessories. The headlight will have two connections for you to make, which includes one flat plug. Before placing the headlight into position, you may need to locate two rubber plugs which have a hole in one end. These will go where the red arrow is shown, followed by the headlight's bottom pins into those rubber plugs. Next, you'll secure the headlight with two screws, one on each side. Similar to the two front turn lamps, use the nut to secure the rear turn lamps into place. Locate the front fender and remove the plastic film. There are four rubber washers that are specifically for the front fender, along with four unique bolts, which will be used to secure the front fender to the bike. Use a screwdriver to help push each rubber washer into their holes. The fender will be secured to the bike from the inside bottom area as seen here using an 8mm socket. Next you can install the mirrors by simply screwing the threads into the threaded hole on the handlebars. It can be a bit tricky to figure out which mirror is for the left versus right. Use a 14mm wrench to tighten the mirror into place. The rubber cover for the handlebar can go on next. Install the small plastic tube on the gas tank as seen here. It helps reduce gas vapors. There's a compartment in the back for the tool bag. Next, it's time to prepare the battery. The battery will be located on the left side of the bike, so you'll need to remove one screw in the side cover as a first step. The battery is held into place with a rubber strap. The battery acid has a plastic nipple that you'll need to cut with cutters. Be careful not to spill the acid. A red tube is provided to aid in filling the battery. With pliers, remove the six plastic caps and your goal will be to put electrolyte into each hole, one at a time, until the fluid level is up to the upper level line. Locate the long plastic breather tube and install that tube onto the battery in place of the red cap. And then reinstall the six caps into the top of the battery. Be sure to clean the top of the battery before moving on to the next step. Your new battery will likely be strong enough as is, but if you have a 12 volt trickle charger, it's not a bad idea to give your new battery a good charge first. Put the battery into place in the bracket and use the rubber strap to secure it. Please note that the black plug wire is on the left, which should match with the negative terminal of the battery. The red wire is on the right, which should lo be located beside the positive terminal. Unscrew the battery nuts and attach the black and red wires and then secure with the screws. The left side cover can now be put back into place secured with a single screw. You're now ready to put some regular gasoline into the tank. 87 octane or higher will work. Before attempting to turn the key, you may need to insert the plastic tip of the key into the special spot in order to open the keyhole. But next, you can insert the key and turn on the bike and let the vehicle finish shelf inspection. Make sure the engine kill switch is in the right position and then press the orange start button to start the bike. Once the bike starts, rev the engine a little bit to help it warm up.
If needed, you can use a diagnostic tester to read error codes. If the trouble light appears on the dash, a diagnostic instrument can report trouble codes. The diagnostic port is a white cap of wire located on the left side of the gas tank. After connecting the tester while the bike is off, you can turn the key to the on position and wait for the tester to read any error codes.